Welcome back to the channel, Real Repairs for Real Customers. We just took this couch in today. We're not going to fix it today, but we're going to try to analyze uh, our approach to the repair and sleep on it overnight and see if that sounds like the best thing to do. Let's uh, look at some of the challenges of repairing this that we can uh, meditate on. So we can see where the dog had uh, chewed it up here. And uh, let's get a good, good look there. All right. So if we were to repair this with uh, a flexible repair compound, this is leather by the way, but we have leather totally missing. If we were just trying to repair it with compound, the problem we would have is in replacing the stitching because the stitching comes along this line here right through the middle of our damage and as we know we can't uh, put stitch holes through the flexible repair compound it's like trying to put a hole in rubber and uh, it doesn't work very well so I think that repairing it uh, to where it maintains its original shape here and using compound to fill it is out of the question. I think replacing it with leather and stitching that in is out of the question too because we're still going to have to hide those stitches with the compound and then we're back to our problem of this contrast color stitching. So most uh, any repair method here would actually work if it was not for the stitching to have to go through it nice and neatly. So it's the same with the other one if we could just go over here and check this one out. Yeah, we have a similar situation. We could see we could we could pull this together and uh, where we have a pleat here that means that we'd have to go back a little bit gradually bring that together. It could be brought together. This here could be brought together as well. So it all could be stitched to bring the leather together but then we still have the problem with where that original stitching went. So it could very well be that we'd have to gather uh, starting back here and gradually taper in and it's going to change, I don't know exactly how this is going to change the lay of the leather, but we're definitely going to have a compromise in the lay of the leather. We bring this, this seam, we could bring it down like this. Anyway, I don't exactly know without thinking about it for a little while. Maybe we won't know until we get started repairing how this is going to work. Do one side at a time and see where that brings us. <clears throat> so what would be the worst case scenario then in, uh, in doing these repairs, both of them? Well, as far as I can see right now, we would have to realign this stitching. We might even need to make a new stitch line entirely in place of this one but we'll see we certainly can do that we can uh, replace all of that stitching to give us our margin here uh, to look similar to the original even after we've gathered the leather up so I think that the thing to do then is tomorrow uh, we'll start uh, sewing from here and we're going to start to, to gather around the hole on both sides and we're going to create an entirely new seam like this one. Let's create a brand new seam and then when we create the brand new seam we'll have to run a new stitch line parallel to that brand new seam. There'll be a slight compromise in the lay of the leather itself but I think we'll maintain the general shape and I also want to maintain that general margin from 
the blind stitch seam to the visible contrast uh, color top stitch. If we can maintain that same margin all the way around wherever that seam happens to be then I think we'll end up with a positive result. So you sleep on it, I'll sleep on it, and we'll see you tomorrow. Well, I hope everybody slept well. <laughs> So I was doing some thinking, and uh, on the start of our repair, and I'm going to pull down over here a little bit so you can see it uh, a little more clearly. We have to sew around this damage, so we have to come quite wide here. But what I wanted to do is not touch this panel at all any more than we absolutely have to. So that means we're using just this panel. And uh, if we do that, then we start gathering really closely here all of a sudden. And we could put a pleat in this material. I don't like that. Uh, I might go right down in here real close and just see how, how uh, carefully we can, we can make this curve here and come out around the damage. Put as little pleat as possible, but try not to affect this panel at all. That way we're just dealing with this one blind stitch here. Now that blind stitch, of course, has got to come around here. So we're coming this far. <clears throat> Let's just lay this down here. So, I mean, we have to start you know close in like this but come around this damage so if we come around the damage that far you see what that puts us here and if we come around then you can see that we have to come also around this damage so that's going to put our blind stitch here and what that means is that this current blind stitch in that entire seam is going to end up being like this. Okay, so there's going to be that bit of a compromise. This is what we're aiming for. So if we can, if we can incorporate this into our blind stitch that'll incorporate all of our damage and we will be left with the original leather that would be our goal and then the only other thing left after that is to put our decorative stop, top stitch in this area and have it meet up so that's going to be the plan I believe uh, this I would like to see how much of this material we could pull forward uh, if we can if we can get this whole arm to come forward a little bit then we won't distort this lay of this leather so much we will gather some from here some from here <clears throat> but it won't be uh, as much distorted as if we had to you know just stretch the leather that far we'd get a severe compromise it would come backwards like this instead of being forward like it is now so if we can pull the whole arm forward just a little bit, uh, that would help. I don't care how much we get. If it's a quarter inch, fine, we'll, we'll take it. Uh, the other thing I'm thinking about, where this leather is folded over here for this <clears throat> blind stitch, uh, so we, we have a buildup of leather. That buildup of leather is going to be inside of our blind stitch and might cause us some problems. So what would you think about taking uh, a razor blade and cutting this thread and eliminating the hump and just let this part fold under and out of the way 
And uh, the other advantage to doing that is we could use the existing stitch holes in this middle piece and not have to come over further into this middle piece in order to sew it. We could use the existing holes and that would save us maybe an eighth of an inch of distortion. So I was thinking about those two things. I, I think uh, getting started over here is going to be kind of critical to see if we can avoid the pleat. But then we're going to have to draw a line and come straight across. That's the plan. Let's see if I can uh, loosen up the back and see how much we gain here on the front. Okay, I think we were successful. I think I've got, got it loose enough where we just gained a, a fraction and can bring that damage closed like that. That sounds good to me. All right. So I'll get set up and move around the other side where we can get started. I think we need to probably draw... Uh, well, first of all, I guess we need to cut this seam and get this opened up and then we'll start our our new blind stitch before I go any further Maybe this will come in handy later for lining us up when we do our blind stitch. So we've got two, two rows of stitches. One was to create this lip, which is heavy. And that's that heavy lip that we really didn't want in our way if we're going to put a blind stitch in here. So ours may not turn out to be the exact same heaviness. It'll just be a straight uh, blind stitch. However, it, it'll, um, I think it'll suffice given the circumstances that we're dealing with. I think just a regular blind stitch is better than ain't nothing. There we go. The idea is I didn't want this doubled up. I wanted this just to fold under without being doubled up. If 
possible. Okay. One other thing we should do is to measure the top stitch. We could measure from hole to hole. So let's go. Let's go. So if we went to one, two, three stitches, three stitches is twenty one. So each stitch is seven. So we'll go seven millimeters. Sometimes your needles can get a little rusty carrying them with you in the field, working in all kinds of weather. So it doesn't hurt to polish them up with a little bit of 4 aught steel wool. Okay, so I can tell right away that this leather is going to offer my needles a good bit of resistance. So we'll take that under advisement and we may end up using a little starter hole. We'll see how it works. I don't like the way that started off looking like on an angle right here, but uh... okay, we're going to go through this piece first <coughs> through this piece first and then through this piece Even with my glasses on, it's hard to see this one. There we go. Okay, come out around that damage just a little bit. As little as I can get away with.
Well, I was a bit afraid of that. We're going to cause that pleat. But I can close up the pleat. That means that I really needed to start down further, which I didn't want to do. But I will come back. I can always go backwards and finish off that pleat later. So I'm not going to be concerned about it at the current time. I'm going to keep motoring as we're going. Okay. just enough to encompass the damage and no more. It's uh, okay now at this point what we really have to do is stop and draw a line that line has to go from the edge of this damage to the edge of this damage and the neater that line is the straighter our seam will be these marks I may as well reinforce while I'm at it because I'm wearing them away by working here on them. I really don't want to lose these registration marks. Because that's also going to contribute to the neat lay of this <clears throat> okay so now I have a guide We want a shorter step on the inside of the curve than on the outside. The guys marching on the outside need to take longer steps. We need to make sure our marks are going to line up, and they are. So we're going to do okay here. Let's take a short step there. And a shorter one here. We're getting back into the original holes for the original stitch.
Yep. Sometimes these soft leathers, you would think the needle would go through them, but these soft leathers grab a hold of the needle and just won't let it slide for some reason. It's nice and pliable and soft feeling as it is. It's uh, just got that extra little bit of grab. Let's go on up to this alignment mark and then we'll start to uh, gather something together. Let's just do a short one there so we're we're putting those marks together okay so now we want the excess here to be folded out of the way See there? We get it all the way out of our way so it's not bunched up. That's our goal. All right. Now we can tighten this up a little bit. And we can also tuck our excess out of the way as we snug it. Here's where we want to relieve the pressure by hopefully gaining a little bit of leather from the back of the arm. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Let's tuck this there. Let's get an extra, extra pull here. We have a canine officer next door, so if you hear some barking, he's uh, protesting about his food bowl or something. <laughs> All right, we got a good start. We have a little pleat here, which we uh, expected. We'll see what we can do. Is we can come back and kind of flatten out that pleat by a couple of stitches. We've got room to do that, but this gathers all of our damage, and I'm liking it. I'm going to take a, just a bit of a break here, let the camera cool down, and we'll pick up right from here. Okay. So the one thing I want to do here, to make this a little easier, I don't have to, but uh, it's helpful. Just uh, pre-poke some holes. This also helps you to get them more even. You can do like that and we'll see if that uh, gives us a bit of an assist going forward. So where are we here? We're directly across. Well, I went kind of short there. That's pretty short, but let's just grab it since we're there. <clears throat> and that way the rest of the holes will be directly across from each other once we get there. A little real short step in here. This goes to the next original hole.
Let's see what this deal is. What's the deal here? What's, what's the deal? The deal is I need to loosen it up. And get back here and make sure... Whoops. That this is mating up. It's mating up without any resistance. That's what I... That's what I need to make sure of. that to lay in there looking nice all right so these lines have made it up we're doing okay doing okay I'm going to try to keep evenly spaced here and follow our line across the top Okay, so the really important thing is I had drawn that nice straight line here. So that really worked well here. We followed the original line of stitch holes here. There's two lines, but we followed the original line stitch line here. So we could use existing holes. That made it easier. Plus, because we use that same line, 
we also have a nice contour. So we're, we're following the contour of the arm pretty much exactly as it was. So we just have to uh, gather this together and see how much of this damage we can incorporate into this end. Might be a little work, but uh, that's the way to do it. I'm going to move you out of my way a little bit. Now we've got damage here, so we're going to have to start to come out around this damage and come on over into this piece a little bit, it looks like. I hate to have to do that, but that was the dog's choice. Now we're going to deviate from our line of holes. to come out around this damage. And this one is coming out around this damage. Uh, but what I'm doing now is uh, I've got this little loose piece here and so what I've decided to do is stop my double needle blind stitch here let's just leave that on hold for a little bit let's attach this to here tidy that up and then finish up our double needle stitch there so we're gonna pause and I'll get uh, set up to do just this little bit and see what we can do just to sort of make that a little neater so we have something to stitch into. Be right back. Okay. We are go. Well, that's some garbage, isn't it? Let's see if we can hook into here.
Well, I thought I could incorporate that. Well, I'm going to have to go another stitch of distance and see if I can incorporate that damage into the stitch. If not, we'll just deal with it a different way later. And it is not uncommon when you have garbage like this to just piece it together first just to sort of anchor it together and then when you're done with that run another stitch that actually serves to make it beautiful you know because I mean you can't even work with it when it's all hanging every which way is that a, is that a word every which way anyway let's get this out of the way That should have tucked into the stitch line, but and it's not. It's not going to exactly, and I don't care. We'll we'll deal with it later. Put some color on that, or whatever we need to do. Okay. But for right now, For right now we're at least uh, together right just tidied up a little bit and we can work from there we'll probably come over and grab into this anyway this stitch is coming out around we'll probably grab a hold of that and hide it with the next one Okay, let's get back to this one. We were about to come across this way. And over to there, around that hole. Hopefully I don't get in the way. We need to follow this line. And I'm going to cross here. Still got to follow this line straight down. And I want just one layer of that leather. There we go. Okay. I know we're going way wide, but we got to go around that hole, so... That's a wide pull, isn't it? Okay. Here's where we need a little bit of assistance. <clears throat> Come on, baby. All right, here's what we do. Let's go through the first piece. Then let's come back up through The second piece. Don't try this at home.
There. do it. I didn't chew it. Thought you knew it. Now you can see why I wanted to get as much forward on this leather as I possibly could to close up that big gap because that was a big pull. It still is. <laughs> but we're getting there. Okay. Let's see what we can do. So that's not pretty yet, but it's together. So let's just uh, do some traveling and then we'll come back and, and uh, tidy it. Let's just do some, some traveling down here. Do another one. So we got another compromise here. But we're going to do one more stitch. Try to try to solve this a little bit. It's still not going to be perfect. It's going to be a compromise, as we told them. By the way, I told the customer what I was going to do, and they are 100% happy with me doing this. Of course, they probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but uh, I explained to them that there will be a slight compromise in the lay of the leather doing this. <clears throat> but that the results were going to be that the repair is going to be done with all the original leather. It's going to be gathered, <coughs> snugged up, a little bit of a compromise in the leather, and uh, that's it. That's it. 
Okay. So if we see something that's not exactly factory here, you know, we're not going to let that bother us. The customer is going to be good with it. This is a very nice couch. And, uh, I mean, it's all leather everywhere. It's, it's well worth keeping. <clears throat> it's worth getting rid of the dog. Okay. Now, this is uh, separated here. It always was, as you can see. So we can uh, pause. Let me get another piece of uh, thread and we'll tidy that. Okay. Here we go. We got leather doubled up here, so you got to slide between the two layers of leather, which is why that has its own level of difficulty. Okay, if you come down here, we're going to grab a little bit of extra material, like that. Grabbing a hunk of material down here. This is what you would call a facelift. We've got a lot of leather opposing us in this little corner right here. There we go. Not an easy place to be playing. There we go.
you know, I, I could, I really need to pull one more. I don't know if I dare, but let's, let's go, let's go, let's pull one more. That would be beautiful if we can get one more. is what we wanted, but we had to work for dinner, didn't we? We really had to work for dinner on that one. Okay, so let's get rid of this. Okay, now we got one more. All right, so incidentally, my first attempt at color match happened to be right on. I had some green, I put some brown with it, and uh, it ended up that this gives me the darker version of these two colors. So we can add some color to where it's needed, check it out, and see if... Uh, if that's going to work, since it's the darker of the two, uh, what you can do in that situation is uh, just divide it before you, uh, you know, do too much with it. Just keep the darker color and uh, divide it up, add some white to the other part and see if that works. This might be enough to to do the job on that. We had a little bit 
leather showing here too. Right here, just little nicks. So, for all that we need to do, um, I, I just think that's accidentally going to be okay. Well, here's another spot. Okay. You know, that might be good enough. See a little, a little white in there. And that might suffice.